Hello! Mass movements refer to the downward movement of soil, rock and other materials under the influence of gravity. These movements can be caused by a combination of several factors, including slope steepness, water saturation, geological conditions, among others. These mass movements can cause significant risks to human lives, infrastructures and ecosystems, making their study essential for disaster prevention and management. So, in this video I will show you a simple methodology on how to represent mass movement susceptibility maps using the ArcGIS Pro. So, stay tuned and I hope you like it! In my project I have already imported the 5 elements that I will use to calculate the susceptibility to mass movements uh, the lithology, precipitation, land use and land cover, slopes and uh, finally the aspect. Perhaps it will be interesting to start by showing each uh, one of these elements, uh, starting here with the lithology. All elements were weighted on a scale of 1 to 5, with 1 being the lowest susceptibility and 5 being the highest. In this case, two types of lithology were defined, uh, sedimentary formations with a weight of 5 and igneous rocks with a weight of 2. Moving on to the precipitation shapefile, and since we are dealing with the Lisbon district, where precipitation presents relatively low values compared to other regions of the country, uh, I define the weight of 1 for precipitation between 400 and 800 mm and 3 for between 800 mm and um, 1400 mm. The next shapefile we will use will be the land use and land cover. We can even change the symbology to see the classes we have. Let's just set these as unique values and change these to the legend, add all values. And as you can see, we have the agriculture, agroforestry, artificial areas, forests, open spaces with sparse vegetation, uh, overgrown areas, pastures and water bodies. We also define these classes with a value between 1 and 5, or actually in this case from 0 to 5. I gave the value of greater susceptibility to areas of agriculture, agroforestry, uh, open spaces and pastures, the value of 4 to overgrown areas, uh, 2 to forests, and finally I gave the value 0 to artificial areas and water bodies. In slope areas, the greater weight was obviously given to areas with greater slope. And finally we have here the exposure of slopes in which uh, the weight of 5 was defined for most humid uh, exposures, so uh, northwest, northeast and north, and the value 0 for all the others. Let's now begin our special analysis, transforming, for example, first this lithology shapefile into a raster file. To start, let's click right here on Analysis, then on this drop-down arrow, and then More Tools. And I'll just search for polygon to raster. It's this, uh, this second one. We can start by dragging and dropping the lithology into the input features. For the value field, we need to change for the weight value or weight class or weight field actually. Here on output, it's just the folder you want to save this new element or this new raster file. I will call it lito underscore r. Click save. Uh, the cell size I want to use is 250. I will use this cell size to every uh, raster that I will create. Set uh, the coordinate system as same as current map. The extent will be the Lisbon district and snap raster we can select for example this slope and then it's finished we just need to click right here on run. Okay I will now remove the lithology shapefile and I will now transform the precipitation shapefile also to raster based on the weight field. Let me just drag and drop the precipitation into the input features. Uh, this field will be the same. Wait, just change the output name. 
cell size we need to change to 250 and for the environment it's actually the same let's run this tool as well and finally let's do the same thing for the land use and land cover so drag and drop for the input features the field it's the same let's change this to look and we can run And after this transformation, we will now reclassify the slopes and the aspect since they are already raster files. To do this, let's once again go to the geoprocessing search bar and search for reclassify. Let's start with the slope, drag and drop to the input raster. And then we need to do uh, a new classification. Let's click here on classify. Let's change this to natural breaks or equal interval. Change this to five classes. And classes low than 5% will be one class. This will be lower than 10. The third one will be lower than 15. This one lower than 20. And the last one we don't need to change. Now this first one will have the number, the value one, two, three, four, five for the last one, okay? Let's change the output name and location. We'll call it slope underscore R. And let's do uh, the same thing we did for the other elements here on the environments, okay? Extent will be the Lisbon district. Lisbon district as well for the mask. And the slope for the snap raster. Let's run this tool. It's immediately noticeable that the area to the east side has much lower slopes than the rest of the district, as we can see here near the, the river. Let's now finish with the reclassification uh, of the aspect file. Let's, let's keep the slope here to use as snap raster. And now let's do the same thing for the aspect, okay? Let's go back to the processing search bar and choose reclassify again to reset the values. And here, as we can see on the, our table of contents, we have the north and northwest from the degree zero to degree uh, 67.5. Okay, let's just change this to the same as the previous files. Slope as snap raster. And here uh, we will give the value 0 to flat or actually we will give the value 5 to north east north and northwest and 0 to all the rest so here on flat we will give the value 0 1 to 22.5 is north so the value 5 northwest it's this third one will have the value 5 as well this here will be 0, 0, 0, and 0. And this one is northwest, so value 5 as well. And the last one, it's north as well. Okay, let's run this tool as well. We now have the all the necessary rasters to calculate the susceptibility of mass movements. Let's remove this slope and aspect. To make the final calculation, we will add our five elements, giving each one a weight. Let's search here for raster calculator. 
let's start by open and close five parentheses and add a plus sign like this five times because we have five uh, five rasters now for the first one we can start by for by the aspect and we need to multiply these variables with the weight we have for each one of them in this case we need to multiply by 0 0.18 so this uh, this aspect will have a weight of 18 percent in this case the slope will have a weight of 0 0.23 let's adjust this the third one is the land use and land cover let's multiply this for 0 0.18 as well the fourth one is the precipitation it's 18 percent and finally the lithology will have the same value of uh, the slopes 23 percent okay let's now save these uh, on our folder i will call it susceptibility or actually since this is a raster uh, i will type the first four letters here we do the same the same as previous the extent will be this lisbon district mask it's lisbon district and for snap raster let's um, let's choose one of these five for example this aspect let's run this tool and see the final result of mass movements susceptibility in the district of lisbon using obviously this methodology which is important to note that is a very simplistic one i'm just going to remove the these ticks from the original five elements of this shape file to the top remove the color and set the outline color as black let's apply and now let's um, do a classification for our final result let's go to symbology here on stretch i will change this color scheme to um, a ramp color from green uh, to red so uh, the green will be the, the lower values and the red uh, the higher values actually let me let me change this representation let's go back to symbology change change this to classify yes i want an uh, histogram let's start with five classes here change this to quantile there we go let's change the color scheme uh, to the previous one it's this one and now here on the labels we can change the uh, from values to actually saying the susceptibility class for example this can be uh, very low this one can be low yellow will be medium orange high and on red the class very high when observing the final result we can immediately see uh, right here in this area to the north with several pixels with susceptibility classes uh, high and very high while to the south next to the river where the slopes are smaller there's a greater amount of greens something we could still do will be instead of having five classes we can only represent three so the method uh, can be quantile as well but we can change the classes to three and instead of having uh, very low we can set it as low this one as medium and this one as high and the final result changes uh, a little bit so when you make a map of this type choose the best way to represent your result
Thank you for watching. If you like this type of content, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment what you want to learn next.